Hello. Hello, testing, testing. I hope this is recording. Um, welcome to a very chit chatty, rambly, podcasty style. I want to say life update, but really just update thoughts and, and things on, on lots of things going on in life, both work, career wise, and otherwise. I want to share with you all ideas that I've I've had. I want to share with you challenges that I've had this year and hope that it can help you. And yeah, basically this video is going to be quite different to my usual. Um, if anything, as much as I, I do hope I can share something that is helpful to someone else, I think this is going to be really therapeutic for me. Um, and I really love watching these kind of videos. So I thought, you know, I need to do I need to do more of what I like watching. And so here is my attempt at that. So welcome. Um, if you are an existing subscriber, thank you so much for following along. And if you are new, then hello, I'm Anika. I'll tell you a little bit about myself in a, in a minute. Um, but yeah, I've got a tea. I've got some snacks. I have a few notes because there are... While I want this to be rambly and I just want to free flow whatever thoughts come to mind, I do have some topics that I want to cover. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. Please let me know how you like these kind of videos. I think of them as a bit of a coffee chit chat. And if you have ideas or topics you want me to cover in these, then I can do that next time. Um, I think that doing more informal chit chatty videos like this will be a really great way for me to connect more with you all um, more consistently because a lot of the videos that I make do tend to take more time to film and edit and require some preparation even for me to get to filming them. Um, like for example, if I'm filming some kind of template update or something more educational around product management, requires sometimes some research and prep but I really want to just build momentum with this almost like 11 I think it's now 11,000 plus people that are on here so yeah if you have specific topics you'd like me to ramble about <laughs> please um please leave a comment um but anyway for those of you who are new hello I'm Anika um I live in Melbourne Australia I have been I think I've been making content on YouTube now for maybe almost two years um, I started on TikTok back in 2020, like so many other people, and then that carried over to YouTube. And quite honestly, I've been investing more in YouTube recently or this year than I have in TikTok. And I'll talk about some of those things. But yeah, um, I have wanted to make YouTube videos for as long as I can remember. Um, I've shared this before. But I have attempted a YouTube channel like probably five times in in the last maybe seven years. And I find it really fascinating to think about like, why was this time different, right? Because I think this time it's, it's, it's successful. Um, and all those other times it wasn't. Um, yeah, I could talk more about that. Maybe it'll come up in one of my rambles today. But I find like reflecting on those sort of things really interesting. And I also think... If I didn't start those other five channels, would this one have been successful? Like, who knows? Who knows? Um, but yeah, a little bit about me, right? So yeah, I've had this channel for yeah a couple of years. So I've been doing content and all of that stuff on the side for some time. Um, I'm a multi-passionate person. That is how I would describe myself. And that doesn't just go for work. It goes for like so many things in life. Uh, I'm really trying to stay away from identifying with my career, which is such a shift for me as someone who is, has always been very career focused and career minded. So I'm trying really hard not to say, hi, I'm Anika. This is what I do. And this is where I work. Um, I'll do that at the end as the last thing. Um, but yeah, I'm multi-passionate um, in terms of the interests that I have. Um, I'm very passionate about, I think in general, just solving exciting problems or even solving boring problems in exciting ways, which is why I, I have attempted a couple of startups before. Um, I love mentoring and coaching people, which is also something I do on the side. Um, I, 
have a doggy. He's sitting right there. He makes frequent appearances on this channel as well and on my, my TikTok. And yeah, I'm, I'm active. I love running. I like going to the gym and all that jazz. I love cooking. And I just keep myself very busy. Like I love having shit to do. Whether it's like a life admin list that I need to tick off or it's like actual chunky work. I love having stuff to do. I cannot really sit idle. Um, so anyway, that's a little bit about me. And to end with, I work in product management. <laughs> I challenge you actually. I challenge you all to next time you're introducing yourself to someone, see if you can introduce yourself as just the human that you are and not as what you do. And if you do introduce yourself as what you do and you love that, then that's that's great. But just try it. I think it's a really interesting way to yeah, think about who you are and what you represent and, you know, how how someone thinks of you, not in terms of like what they think of you, but yeah, how, how they think of who you are. Um, anyway, so that's a little bit about me. Um, if you are a product manager or you're considering getting into the world of product or even tech in general, go check out my other videos. I, I hope and think they would be helpful based on the feedback that I've had, but yeah, that's sort of me. So this video is very different. I generally tend to make videos like that are more focused, that are more, sorry, education, educational, educational. I was going to say education focused. But yeah, I really just felt like sitting down and just having a therapeutic session where I just express the things on my brain <laughs> because there is a lot in my brain. Um, but let's get into some of the topics that I have. And first and foremost, I do want to talk a little bit about like I want to set some context for the rest of this video. So I am going to be talking about a lot of things this year that I've faced, challenges, wins, just changes in ideas that I've had around career and stuff like that. All of that really started for me at the start of this year. Um, and to set the context, at the start of this year, I stepped into a new role at work. I stepped into a people management role and I'd never really done that before. And I'm so excited by that because I absolutely love people management. I love coaching. Sorry, I don't mean to say I love people management because there's a whole heck of admin that comes with it. I mean to say I love coaching and I love mentoring. Um, I feel like it comes quite naturally to me and I really, really enjoy it, which is partly why I make these videos. But anyway, I more officially stepped into that kind of role at work and I just didn't, I mean, it was, it's been a change. Like the skill set that you need for people management is different. Like I was at principal, a principal PM level for some time and then moved into group product management or gr group PM. And I didn't really f foresee how different it would be or what like different skill sets I would need. So that kind of set a little bit of the tone for the year. Um, and I really focused on like, I really focused on making sure I'm doing a good job with that because if I have people who are reporting to me, I don't want to let them down. Like I, I take a lot of pride in that. Um, so yeah, that kind of set the tone for the year because it meant I suddenly felt like I had a lot less time, both actual time and just like mental capacity to do like so many of the other things that I really enjoy. Um, my content started to take a bit of a back foot, not just because of the time, but because I started really caring about what people at work think of my content. And, you know, people at work have found out about my content before and I've kind of been shy in the moment and moved on. But for some reason this time, I really let it create this physical blocker for me and mental blocker where I just have really resisted posting because I've cared so much about what people think. Um, I've really gotten past that recently, by the way. Um, so yeah, that's just some context. I've said that a million times. Um, so yeah, I've had yeah a really great learning curve, I think, with 
this role and just getting to work on things that aren't necessarily within a team. Like I'm no longer in a development team or a scrum team working on building the stuff, um, which has been good because I did want to focus on more strategic work. But it's also come with its challenges because it is, a again, like I said, a different skill set. And the other way it's related to my content in a way I didn't really foresee is I used to make days in my life like vlogs around my work day. And I felt like a lot of the stuff in those vlogs was relatable because I was talking about really specific stuff that a PM does when you're like in a team, managing products, managing teams, sorry, managing your, um, yeah, managing your products, working with team of engineers, an engineering manager, a tech lead, a designer, all of that stuff. And because I've moved away from that at work, I suddenly felt like I didn't know what to make content about. And I guess a part of me doesn't necessarily want to be making videos about how to make a roadmap and how to run your sprints and, you know, all of all of that tactical stuff because I've, yeah, I just, I don't know, I don't, I don't really enjoy that part of it. Um, any PM who tells you they enjoy making a roadmap is lying. <laughs> but at the same time, I recognize it's a it's something that a lot of people find challenging and I do want to still be a resource for that. So anyway, backtracking, this new role really created some roadblocks for me or I created them myself, I should say, in ways that I didn't foresee. And there was sort of like this trickle effect throughout the year that I didn't really realize until I got to close to middle of this year. And I, mind you, like I have, I work for an amazing company and I work with amazing people. So it's nothing to do with that. It's just more thinking like, is what I'm doing really aligned with me and what I want and what I enjoy? And if something is taking away time and energy that you can put into something else you really love, it, it has this trickle effect, which I'll explain now, where I got to the middle of the year and honestly, I was an absolute mess. I was an absolute mess and I've never really been at that point before. I've always been someone who has known exactly what they want and always been very motivated through really hard times and hard work. You know, like I'm, I'm by nature a grinder like that, like I will grind and hustle. Um, And I've always been like that. And for the first time, I got to this point this year where I felt like I had no motivation. I had no inspiration. There were times where I genuinely didn't really want to get out of bed because, yeah, I just didn't know. I, I just didn't feel like whatever I was going to do that day was going to like, give me energy um and I was already depleted with energy because I wasn't spending my time doing the things that I really wanted to do and this is not to say I don't want to work in the role that I have it's more to say that I completely stopped doing so many of the other things that I enjoy outside of work Um, and I do spend a lot of my time outside of work doing side projects and I completely like I really paused on that so anyway what I did is you know after having my bit of like my moping season (laughs) which I think is healthy to go through like you need to get to a point where you're just like I am a lost cause before you then take action to move forward but I got a career coach um what was really cool about this is actually this career coach is actually a manager of mine from a previous job And I just randomly stumbled upon her LinkedIn one day and saw that she was doing career coaching. And I was like, you know what? At this point, I have really nothing left. Like I have zero motivation. Um, I may as well talk to her. And yeah, I started doing these career coaching sessions. I think I started at the end of July. And we're still meeting now. Um, We meet every two to three weeks. And I don't know how much of the career coaching itself helped, um, but I can tell you now I am in such a different place and I'm in a really good place. 
Um, but yeah, that's one of the things I did is I got a career coach. I have had a therapist in the past, like probably like seven, eight years ago. Um, and I didn't really know what to expect of a career coach. Uh, every career coach is probably different, but I would say that my experience with this one is very much in between like therapy and or therapist and career, not, not in a career advisor or a mentor, but like a, like a career therapist kind of. Um, and anyway, that has been amazing. Some of the stuff that I have realized through this career coaching is that I had become the biggest inner critic. I, I had developed a really big inner critic. Um, I had let imposter syndrome get to a level where I didn't know how to control it. And I'm, again, have never experienced imposter syndrome before, really. At least not to a debilitating amount or level that I did this year. Um and then when my career coach would ask me questions around why do you feel this way or like you know what are some specific examples of why you feel like you're an imposter i couldn't actually come up with any ideas my camera died um but i'm still i'm still trying to do this in one take um but anyway when my career coach would ask me like why do you feel like an imposter or why do you feel like you're not good enough for xyz i didn't have any any responses to that and so through this I realized sometimes we really internalize our thoughts and we get into this negative spiral and we convince ourselves right that's what the inner critic does we convince ourselves that something is way worse than it really is and it's not until someone external and I think it helps if it's someone removed from you like not a family member or a friend or something it's not until someone like third party looks at you sorry, or asks you that you kind of like, you need that lens to be like, you know what? I, I don't know. Like I am doing okay. And I am criticizing myself for, I don't know, not being good at my job or not being good at people management when I'm actually doing fine. And I don't have the evidence to say that I am doing terrible, but I've convinced myself that I am, if you know what I mean. So anyway, I basically went through a period where I thought I was good, like I wasn't good at anything, um, that I was an imposter, that everyone knew I was an imposter, that people were finding my videos and questioning what, I, like, what does she know to be making this, these videos and this content? Um, I don't know, just a very negative place is where I got to. And in hindsight, like I said, I feel like I needed to get to that place in order to get to where I am now, which is like, I feel a whole lot better. Um, but the other sort of revelation I've had through this entire experience is I've always had this idea of what I've wanted my career to be. And I think this year, 2023, is when I've realized that maybe I actually don't want what I thought I wanted for my career. And as I mentioned, I'm someone who's always identified myself based on my career. And this has been a really big shift for me because, yeah, it's like if I don't suddenly have this North Star for my career, which, by the way, when I'm talking about this North Star, I am talking about more in the corporate sense, um, progressing through the career ladder, essentially. Um, if I don't necessarily want that anymore like what does that mean where do I get my sense of purpose like oh no where do I get my sense of validation from um and my my career coach really helped me to identify that I really put my sense of value on my career and if something at work was going well then I felt good if something at work wasn't going well then I felt shit and I really let it stem throughout my entire life so I really put an end to that and I'm really happy about doing that. But that then also raised the question of if I'm realizing that I don't actually want my career to be what I thought, like what do I want my career to be? Um, and by the way, like I've always thought for the most part, 
I think it's changed in recent years. For the most part, I've always thought I would just climb the career ladder. And I think I'm very well set up to do so. Like, I think I laid the foundation for that. But I just don't want it anymore. Like, I don't want, I don't want that level of responsibility. And I don't want that level of power. I don't want that level of corporate bullshit. And... Yeah, I just, it's such, it's such a game, right? Um, I don't want to deal with the big company politics and all of that stuff. Um, and mind you, while I'm saying this, like, I feel a little bit nervous saying it because I do work in a big company and going, like saying this right now is a part of me really pushing through and saying, you know what? I have to stop caring what someone might think. I have to stop caring that Someone might watch this video and hear that I said this and it like, who cares? Who cares? At the end of the day, I have a role and I think I'm doing a good job of it. That's all that matters. Um, But the reason I want to share all this stuff with you is because you might think you want something for your career, right? I get so many messages where people are or comments on my videos where it's like, I really want to be a PM. Like I want to transition from this career that I've had, it's my dream. And like, you know, please help me, blah, 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 blah. And like, that's all well and good. But just know that like your career wants and your career desires will and can change. And that is totally fine. Um, And sometimes you, you don't realize that you don't necessarily want to do something until you're doing it. So yeah, I, I think because I really let go of the stuff that I liked and I enjoyed it made me realize how much of, I think most of my actual career working for a company, I enjoyed working for a company. And because I had all of these other things on the side that like set my soul on fire. So yeah, that's a, it's been a really big learning for me to make sure that I stay on top of my interests and my passions. And that no matter what is happening in my actual work, I always make time for the stuff that brings me joy and meaning. And I really, yeah, find inspiration in because as much as I make videos about product management and all of that, and I really do love product management as a craft, like someone would be lying to you if they said they enjoyed all of the corporate admin that comes with it. (laughs) And yeah, that's why I love startups because you can really focus on the problem and solving it and somewhat let go of all of the other bureaucracy that comes with it. But everything has pros and cons, right? So yeah, my career goals changed. I also got to a point where I, like, I'm a huge remote, remote working at adv- work from home advocate. And I will fight someone <laughs> who says otherwise, as in like people have their own opinions, but I will argue down argue you down if you tell me that we should not be remote working I'm not saying it needs to be full-time but anyway whatever that's a tangent um but I almost questioned like maybe I've had the whole work from home thing wrong like maybe I am not designed to work from home and that's why I've gotten into this rut and while I think a small part of that is true ultimately no matter where you're working from if you are working on the right thing no, that shouldn't matter. Um, so yeah, I feel like I was probably lacking a bit of connection and connection with like-minded people. And so another thing that I did was I immersed myself back in the startup scene. Um, and I did that just through people that I already knew um, from my previous time in the startup space and yet yeah, connected with them, um, got to contribute and help out with some startups. Um, I did a, a Q&A with um, a startup accelerator program on my previous experience and just really got that fire going again. So I don't really know where I'm going with this. Just wanted to share it. Quite therapeutic. I haven't really shared this with anyone but my career coach. Um, but yeah, let your career be a journey. Like I think I've, I've talked about this many times before. I thought I wanted to climb the ladder. But no, I want my career to be a journey. If that means I ultimately end up in the same place as where the ladder was going to take me, fine. But I don't want to go like that. I want to go like this. 
is is basically where I've got to. Um, something that I'm really really interested by is like the future of careers, and I want to start talking more about this in in my content. Like, what are, what do the future of careers look like? Because I don't think we are going to have future careers where you have one employer or like you have one job where you spend 40 hours of your time like with the gig gig economy and with freelance well freelancing is the gig economy and content creation and people having side businesses like I think people are going to make up 100% of their income through lots of different things and not just relying solely on one employer to do so <coughs> Sorry, and I'm I'm really fascinated by that. So that that's all along the lines of being multi passionate, having a multi hyphen career, having a career portfolio, which is again like you're not just doing one thing; you're trying lots of different things. Your portfolio can change over time because your interests change or you learn something. But just doing one thing, like yeah, that that works for many people and that is fine. But I think I've just realized it's it's not for me. Um, so anyway, that's, that's some of the the stuff that I've gone through with my career and I think, or with my, my work. And I think while going through all of that, I took a massive pause on my content, especially on TikTok. I think I was still uploading on YouTube because I, it just felt really dishonest. It felt wrong. And I guess I wasn't inspired and motivated to post. Um, and I'm really gutted about that because yeah, I, I had a I had a really good momentum with my TikTok and I have really struggled to like reignite that spark. Meanwhile, the spark that I have with my YouTube content is just through the roof. So, you know, again, I think just because you're really enjoying something right now doesn't mean you have to enjoy it forever. Like ride the wave. Um, I was actually listening to a podcast today. If you haven't heard of How to Get Rich by Naval, I forgot his last name. I'll screenshot it here. I'm sure you would have heard of him. Um, he's he's renowned and I think got blew up after his Twitter storm all about all the things to do to, to become rich or wealthy, really. Um, and where was I going with this? I forgot where I was going with this. Complete mind blank. There is something he said that was um, along the lines of what I was saying. Um, I've completely forgotten. That's okay. <laughs> oh, I remembered. He says that, oh, oh my God, I've forgotten again. I'm getting lots of different thoughts because this whole career and work topic is like a big cloud in my head. But anyway, I'll come back to it if I remember, but definitely recommend reading or listening to his podcast. Um, all right. What else do I have? Um, hmm. Um, future of careers in a critic. I'm just looking at my notes down below. Um, okay. So I guess I've been thinking a lot about what I want to do next. And I feel like this, like trusting your gut, right? Like I'm a huge intuition person and I'm really big on icky guy if you're not familiar with that like I think if you can combine what you love with something that you can make money with um with what you're good at like that is the dream and I feel lucky in that I think I've landed upon that oh it was weird looked like something just moved um I feel like I've landed upon that but I'm not capitalizing on it so yeah I've I've got some some really ambitious things in the works and plans for really leveling up my content, not leveling up in terms of like production quality or anything. It doesn't matter. Like taking my content to the next level, whether that's in terms of quantity or it's in terms of like the value and the different types of content pillars that I have. But I feel like I've, I've spent the last three years building this really solid foundation for my content. And with me feeling misaligned with my actual corporate career I feel like you know when they say you make your own luck or when opportunity meets luck I feel like I have created the opportunity for myself and things are aligning 
So I've spent the last three years through very, very small actions, by the way. And this is my takeaway to you is do lots of small things for a long period of time. And then you will realize one day that they've accumulated to something and then the dots will connect. So like in the back of my mind, I've always been thinking like, when could I get some of my, like, when would I be able to dedicate more time to working on my side hustles? You know, I typically would spend most of my weekends doing that. I would spend any time that I took off work, working on my side hustles and all of that sort of stuff. So, but I, but I've never known when the right time to do that is. Um, and so now that I've got to this point where I've got so many ideas that I want to execute on with my side projects, I've figured out what my interests, that I really need to lean into my interests. I figured out maybe what I don't want from my traditional career. And I have the opportunity to think about in, in, in no rush as well. Like I have the opportunity to think about what do I do next? It just feels like all the dots connecting and it feels like opportunity meeting luck. What that opportunity is, I don't know. You know, it could be me really um, going in on my content and pushing the quantity and seeing what I can, what, like, what, what community I can amass. And then maybe something comes of that. Or it could be me just promising myself that I'm going to invest in my side hustles no matter what is going on at work. Um, and then again, just build that incrementally over time. I'm going on a mad rant now, but all I'm trying to say is that there are times where you have to trust your gut. And I have been ignoring my gut for the majority of this year, which is not me at all. And I think that also was a reason why I yeah, just ended up feeling as terrible as I did. So yeah, if you've got an, if you've got something you're interested in, I would say you're very lucky. Like you're in a good position because there are so many people and including friends of mine who like don't really have interest. They, they say they don't have hobbies. So if you do have a hobby, if you do have something you really like, like think about how that could marry up with your work or yeah, you, you earning an income because that's, that's really the, the dream. Like not all hobbies are meant to become that, but yeah, if, if you can make it work, then, then it's a bonus. That's really the gist of what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to share, to recap, it's okay to reevaluate your career. It's okay to reevaluate what you want and what you thought you wanted. If you get to a place where you're, you're, you, you've, you've hit a low point, think about some really small steps you can take to get out of that. You know, for me, that was starting, like what triggered it for me, like getting out of that low was the career coach. Um, because I happened to stumble upon a LinkedIn post. So keep your eyes out and that might give you some clues as to the smallest thing you could do to get you out of a place where you're not feeling great. Um, trust your gut. I just talked about that, so I won't go into it more, but like lean into what you enjoy, lean into what gives you energy and what drains your energy. I think knowing that is really important. And... Yeah, like think about the future of careers. Like if you have thoughts on that, I'd love to know. You know, do you, would you rather one full-time job for stability for your career goals or would you rather like do lots of different things? I'm interested to know if there are people who are like me, which I guess if you're a freelancer, you probably are like me. Um, But sometimes I think I'm a little bit weird when it comes to that stuff. Like, do I really think I could make myself successful with a career portfolio? Yes, I could. I absolutely could. I just don't have any references or real people in my life to look to for that. Um, And yeah, I think that's kind of the gist of what I wanted to talk about. I think I'm probably going to end this now. I don't know how to end this video, just like I did not know how to start the video. Um, But I think I might do these more. Um, just when I build up a collection of thoughts and things that I think might be of interest to someone. Um, please comment below topics you would like me to ramble about. 
<laughs> um, and I can absolutely do that. And yeah, I think I'm going to leave it here. I'm now going to go to the gym. It's almost seven o'clock. But in something else I'll end on is if you're not getting the energy from your work, and let's say for me, if I wasn't able to get the energy from working on my side projects, something that I know gives me energy is going to the gym. So even if you can't do everything that gives you energy, if you can at least do something, that is that is that is better than nothing. Um, and yeah, in terms of this channel, actually, maybe I'll end on that. Like what's coming? I haven't been regular with uploading for the last few months because of many reasons related to the stuff that I'm saying and, and, and other family stuff. But yeah, I, I, I see so much potential in the 11,000 plus of you that are here today and hopefully more soon. Um, I'm going to continue to make product management content because I know that's the stuff that's really valuable, but I do want to lean more into what I enjoy and what I like watching and that a little bit of that is lifestyle content, but I also want to lean into more like being a bit more open and being more vulnerable. Like I think I, I'm trying to be in this video, um, in in the hopes that it gets you to to learn about me a little bit more and who I am, because I think ultimately, like if you want content to be successful, like your content to be a successful career, then you need people to like you as a person and yeah you have to share a little bit of who you are to do that and I think I've really been challenged with that um I've, I've definitely not not been super open so yeah that's what's coming up for this channel um I've got a bunch of refresh templates coming up so roadmap template I'm gonna do a strategy template um probably not gonna do a product requirements template because honestly that's not really gonna change from the last two years but I know the roadmap one is a really popular and highly requested one. So I'll definitely do that coming up soon. And yeah, that's kind of it. I felt like I had way more to talk about, but maybe when I actually get talking, it's not as much as I thought, right? Because again, your brain exacerbates these things. So if you got this far, thank you so much. Um, if you got this far, please comment walnut because I'm currently eating walnuts with my dog. And yeah, I will see you in my next video. I think the next video coming out is going to be, it should be the product road, 2024 product roadmap. Hopefully at the end of this week um, or by the end of the weekend. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in my next video and definitely the next coffee chat coming up sometime soon.